Hi there, I'm Linda. This is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. Just a quick video today because I want to get some harvesting done. First up is some onions, then some broad beans, and finally some parsnips. Now this is the patch of onions that's been in the ground the longest and they are definitely ready to come out. I've got some of these onions flopping over, which is a sign that they're ready to be harvested. Some of them are going to flower and they're never going to flop over so you really just got to take those out. Now the ones that go to flower produce this really thick stalk that holds up the flower head and eventually the seed head so this stalk isn't going to flop over and it doesn't close over the onion because the, the seeds are created from the bulb itself. The onions that are good keepers are the ones that haven't formed the flower head and they're the ones that kind of have flopped over and that means that that when you cure it will seal the onion so uh, it all dries off and um, you can keep sort of onions like that a lot longer. Whereas those flowering um, bulbs, that stalk is a lot thicker and you find that it just doesn't dry out. And so you just really can't keep those very long at all. I do have onions at various stages. These onions here I did put in shortly after the ones I'm going to harvest today. But for some reason they haven't done very well at all. A lot of them are going straight to seed. And some of them just look like they've stopped growing um, before they've really bulbed up. And they're a red variety. So I don't know if they're just not really suited to my environment. Moving along a bit further, I've got another red variety that seems to be doing okay. I did plant them quite a bit later than those other ones. And so too with the um, brown onions that I've planted further down the, the garden bed. They're still going through their bulbing stage, but they look like they're starting to get a bit, good bit of growth going now. This is a volunteer chamomile plant in amongst it all. So whether that's had some impact on my growing onions, I'm not too sure. But yeah, I don't think I'll be harvesting these ones for keeping in the pantry, that's for sure. Now the plants themselves that I'm about to harvest today look a little beat up. They did suffer a little bit in the recent hailstorm that I had. But as you can see, the bulbs themselves haven't been affected. It um, didn't sort of pummel them too much, only the, the plant. But we're going to get those out of the ground now, so it really doesn't matter. And the rest of the onion crop, we're probably too small to really get beaten up by that hail. So that's come through really well. Okay, it's time to get these onions out of the ground. Pretty nice looking onions, actually. Happy to take the big and the small. over halfway through and they're looking pretty good. Now that I've got all my onions out of the ground, it's time to get the curing process happening. Now you could just leave them out on the garden bed to dry in the sun for a few days. And I know plenty of people do that, but I'm not too confident in my weather. It is a little unpredictable at times. So I'm just gonna pack these all up, take them to my carport and do what I've done with my garlic. It's a nice protected area, plenty of ventilation. The sun doesn't get to it and it's a great place just to leave things like onions and garlics, just to cure and do their thing. Now, the ones that have got the big flower head, I will leave those to cure, but 
knowing that they won't cure properly, I'll use those in the kitchen first. And then I'll use these ones which have totally flopped over. That will be dried off and that should store really well. Before I get the onions curing, I'm going to head up to the broad beans and see what we can harvest there. It's really good to see that my broad beans survived the recent bad weather really well and they've got some really beautiful broad beans coming on them. Now I'm not much of a fan of the young pods with the broad beans, being much happier to wait till they're kind of this size and they've got the beautiful big pods in there and what I do with them is double pod them which means taking off the outer cover and then also the cover of each of the um, seeds themselves and then um, well you blanch them to get that inner cover off and then I'll freeze the uh, young seed nice and bright green like a little pea actually and I just store that in my little silicon squares in the freezer and I'll use that in salads or as a side dish just as a green side dish and it's really great to be able to grab that out as a convenient food. Before we get going harvesting them all I will double check that they are kind of a, a good size now I think that's beautiful, who knows it could go a bit longer and Ruby, one of my viewers, will probably tell me that that will be the case but I'm quite happy to take them at that size. Let's just snap off another one that's getting up there, see that looks like a really good size. Oh beautiful. I love the little soft cushiony case that it all comes in. Isn't nature just so thoughtful? Now I haven't grown this variety before so while they might actually get a little bit bigger than this, the pods that are kind of looking big enough in my mind are the ones I'm going to harvest because I really would like to get some of these into the kitchen. I might get my secateurs out for so I don't ruin the plants. Some of them are a bit damaged or a bit nibbled down. So while, oh yeah, you can see the culprit there. A little worm has got in. Um, these pods up here should be fine even if we kind of have lost that one. Now, some of them are definitely too small. So I'll leave those to fill out a bit more. But there's definitely some more down the bottom I can grab. So that's all I'm going to take for today, which is enough to add to a meal. But I have learnt something with my harvest today and that is perhaps I might have planted these plants a little too closely. The plants in the middle really haven't got the size um, broad beans that the outer plants have, the ones that have had more light. It's sort of a, a lot darker in the, the middle and probably less flowers, less bees getting in there, I don't know. But I've got the plants at about 20 centimetres, 18, 20 centimetres spacing. But next year I might go sort of 25, 30 centimetres spacing just to make sure that each plant gets the light it needs. And hopefully that will increase production. So now let's get on to clearing this path. Now the reason I want to clear these parsnips is not because I need more parsnips in the kitchen, but because I really want to keep my paths clear this year. And these volunteers have grown right in the middle of everything. And I'm also going to clear these plants here which are in my existing potato bed because they're just about to go to seed which means that the root's going to be quite woody and not as great for using in the kitchen. There's one of them here that might already be past being nice to use but some of these other plants are still young enough. 
I'll get started with these ones in the path first. Here's a little baby one and a mini one. Now they're not going to be big, but um, you can still roast the small ones and they come up really deliciously. Well, that one's okay. No, that one's not too bad. Small one. My parsnips are out of this bed now, which just leaves my beetroot. I'm leaving those to get lots of seeds. I've got a golden beetroot. I've got some beautiful crimson beetroots. And over the back there, I'm growing some um, chogia beetroot. Now, I'll have to do my research and make sure that these don't cross. But I have saved seeds from beetroot before and they seem to have been okay. But I'm not sure if they will cross or not, but I'll definitely be looking into that. And just here is the patch of parsnips that I've spoken about in a recent video with planting sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna leave those ones to flower and seed along with the beautiful leeks that are just opening up their flowers now. Now there's quite a bit of parsnip here actually. Some little ones will go straight to the compost. Uh, but there's enough here, I think, that I'll be doing some parsnip puree. And I usually freeze that in cubes and use that during the year. And I'll make a batch of parsnip soup. And if you're interested in making those delicious recipes I'll leave a link to a video in which I've made them in the description. Well my path's a little bit clearer now which makes moving around my veggie garden a whole lot easier. I'm going to head off to the kitchen and get my parsnips processed and also my broad beans and get my onions onto their drying rack. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.